Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorced mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Consent orders. Apparently, it's not rocket science. So today we're going to be exploring why it's not rocket science. We're going to look at what they are, why you need them, when you should probably do them, and how hard is it, and what are the steps? So number one question, mum, let's just get to the nitty gritty. What are consent orders? Consent orders Mm -hmm. are just like any other order of the court except that instead of someone in the court having to choose between what you want and what the other person wants, Mm -hmm. you have put your heads together, you and the other person, and come up with orders that you both agree on. And you put them into the court and say, firstly, we want the court to do um, sort our children or property out, and here are the orders we want you to make. Okay. So that's a consent order. So basically we've decided who gets what and when the kids go where. And we want the court to rubber stamp it, so to speak. Yeah. Except it's not really rubber stamping because the court has to have a look at it to make sure it's fair. Mm, But that doesn't happen in a trial environment or anything like that. They do it in their back room, in their chambers. Okay. So if you're going through a divorce or de facto separation, really the final finishing touches on your property and children is getting an order for property and getting an order for children. Yes. But what you're saying is with consent orders that you and your ex have either through mediation or through talking together have come up with your own Yes. A- agreement. And you're yes. saying, here, court, we don't want to use you guys, but could you please just check our agreement? That's Tell right. us it's okay. And you can use those, or you could have consent orders after someone started court proceedings. Okay. So, so at any point along the way. Any point along the way. And uh, if if you've already got proceedings going, you're basically saying, hi, court, we've agreed on these things. Please make these orders. If you haven't started anything in the court, because the court won't get involved unless someone makes an application. Mm. Um, if you haven't already started going through the court, then you actually have an application prepared mm-hmm. and you file that with your consent orders and go, hi, hi, court, I know you haven't heard of us before, but here's who we are, here's our application, and here's what we agree on. Can you please stamp that? Okay. Mm. All right. So that sounds good. Like that's the best option as opposed to if you listen to our episode, The Court Convey About, and mm-hmm. we talk you through the whole process from start to finish, mm. you just don't want to get on there to start with. And if you are on there, then consent orders are a way to get off because well, it's so expensive. Also, yeah, it is expensive. But as someone pointed out, these people sitting up on the bench mm-hmm. have never clapped eyes on you guys before usually. Mm. They haven't. They don't know your kids. Mm-hmm. They don't know what's right for your family. And if a court, if a judge has to make an order about your family, then that means that the two of you have just given away your right to have some say in it because the judge can come down with something completely different to what either of you wants. Mm. It's not a kind of binary thing where he'll go Either or, or she'll go, oh, yes, he's perfectly right, he, I'll follow exactly his orders, or she says, oh, she's right, I'll follow hers. Usually they make their own decision and you'll win some, lose some, mm. you know, and, and you've got no control. Yeah. No so, control. So consent orders are basically your way of sorting everything out without involving the court. But you might have halfway been through court, but you're stopping it as well. Yes. Why, if someone's sitting here right now, they've just separated, they've just divorced, mm. why do you need consent orders? Okay. Well, let's start with property. property. Why would you need consent orders for property? Why can't yep. they just walk away? Well, people do, I guess, but it, you, it's not over. Your property settlement hasn't happened until the day that you have either a financial agreement properly signed, a binding one, mm-hmm. or the court has stamped your orders or made orders. Other than that, um, anyone can come back at anyone for property settlement up until the period of 12 months after any divorce um, or if they're married and if they're separated up to two years after separation of a de, of a de facto sorry, relationship. So you... Um, you really don't know, like with a divorce, some people don't, get, they walk away and, and leave the property divorced. and they don't bother getting divorced either because the most common thing is, well, I've, I'm not getting married again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going. So they don't bother with the divorce. Mm. And then uh, then that means someone can open up the property, file an application for property settlement 
eight years, nine years, 10 years down the track, or mm-hmm. in the case of poor old fellow in Farmer and Bramley, I'm, I'm saying that tongue in cheek because I think he got what he deserved, mm. but this famous case of Farmer and Bramley, I think it was 18 months after they separated, he won five million in lotto mm. and they'd had nothing when they left. She got a kitchen table and four kids and so her lawyer went to court and said, I know that he got this money after separation, but she should have some. Mm. And uh, first of all, I think the fellow said it was his mother's money. He didn't buy the ticket and the court oh didn't really believe that. But they gave her, I think she got $750,000 because she'd been making contributions in looking after the children, even though she made no contribution to that. Mm. So for those of you who think you just might win lotto or... Or or for those of you who are thinking you're just going to walk away and not bother to do it, maybe you will create an awesome business. Maybe Mm. you'll write a best-selling novel like J.K. Rowling. She's worth a buttload now. I I bet she's Um, glad she did a property settlement. So you've got to just go, all right, we need to sort this out. So you can just close that door and walk away. What about Mm. with children? Why do you need consent orders for children? Mm. Sometimes you really don't. You could do a parenting plan instead, which mm-hmm. is something written down. But I think for clarity, it's nice to have things written down. Mm. Um, a consent order means that you can't reopen that order unless there's been a significant change. So when you say reopen, it means you, you can't, can't go, go back, back and, court change and change stuff. Change mind. Yeah. Because the court's view is that generally children are benefited by stable arrangements and they are dis- disadvantaged by the parents slugging it out in court mm. um, so that the court tries to make it very difficult for you to keep going back. Yeah, because everybody's their best when they're at court slugging it out, <laughs> which is no, being sarcastic. sarcastic. You know, <laughs> so, yeah, you're that's upset a good call. And the yeah. money that's wasted on, on us lawyers could easily have been spent on the kids mm. or saved. Mm. So the court really discourages that. Okay. So All right. you have you have to have a consent order is good. It clarifies it. It stops people going back and it's done. It's not as final as a property settlement order. Mm-hmm. You can always reopen if like go back to court if things change dramatically. Mm-hmm. But with property, usually when it's done and that stamps on there, it's done and it's final. Yeah. And it saves you stamp duty. Mm. If you're transferring properties pursuant to, like, if it's mentioned in the consent order that you're going to transfer the house from one person to another, uh, under Section 90 of the, of the Family Law Act, mm. you don't have to pay stamp duty. Which is brilliant. Yeah. And that's the same transferring cars. Yep. You don't have to pay Absolutely. stamp duty. And stamp duty is quite expensive. It is. It sounds not, but it is. <laughs> so if Surprises you do you. it through consent orders mm. or an order, it's mm. going to save you money. Yeah. Um, okay, so when? When do people go and go, okay, I'm going to get this consent order sorted? It depends on the state of their negotiations. It might be that you separate and you say, look, all right, I've got my money organised from the bank. I've got a loan. I just need to get these documents done so that it's final. Um, And you might do it quite early in the proceedings. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or it might be, as you said, after a year or so of bashing each other up with legal letters and spending a lot of money, mm. you finally reach a level where it's agreeable agreement to yeah. you yeah. and then you do them then. Okay. Um, so, again, like you said, with parenting uh, uh, consent orders, you might not need it straight away mm. as long as you've got a parenting plan. Mm. But get your general advice or get your yeah. lawyer's advice. But, yeah, so there's there's options there. Mm, Sometimes but, you don't know that you yeah. want to lock it in yet. Yes, yeah, so you're right there, Laura. There's There are parenting plans that you can do, but they're not binding. Yeah. Um, the court looks at them if you subsequently go to court and mm. say, well, why would I make orders different to this? This is mm. what you used to agree on. Mm. Um, so sometimes a parenting plan is pretty good. So but it often listen, misses things out. Listen to our How to Stop Your Children from Being Used or Chess, chess pieces, pieces yes. in the podcast episode list. I'll put it in the show notes. Okay. And now next question, Mum, how hard <laughs> is it? Well, it's not rocket science. Well, why do lawyers get paid so much money? How much does a lawyer charge to do a consent order? Mm, three and a half to five thousand dollars for both of them, or just one? No, no, we, they can only act for one of the people. No, no, no. So for property and children? Oh, or? it could be more like five thousand if it's children and property. Okay. Yeah. So you could go to a lawyer and be like, "Hey, can yeah. you do this for me, yes. please?" And and p- lawyers love to do that for you. But, they do. Mm, okay, yeah. but is it hard? Is it hard to do? Uh, it's not that hard to do. Mm. So your application um, is the actual application for consent orders mm. uh, is really just filling in boxes, dates of birth and 
uh, where you know what's your full name, the kids, who they live with, all of that. So that's the actual form. Yeah, the yep. application form. Yeah. Um, for property settlement issues, there there are a few tricky bits in there, but mm-hmm. um, we talk them through. I think in the in course, course yeah, because it, you've got to put in um, your actual um, finances and then what the impact of the orders is. Um, but filling in that form is not very hard. The mm. tricky bit is really the orders themselves. You've got to make sure that they do what you want them to do. Yes. Um, and also that it closes the gate so that when you do win your lotto or, you know, write your famous book, uh, there's no coming back. With the orders, mm. it's the wording that you have to be careful mm-hmm. with because filling in the actual consent order forms is, is not so hard. Particularly with children, yeah, it's not very hard. But it's the wording... And uh, how do sometimes people get tripped up with wording? Um, what have you seen in the past where they've had I to see come it back? even with young lawyers. I probably made the mistakes myself when I was younger. Yeah, um, I'm sure I did. Uh, where it looks really good, mm. it's full of you know, do this and do that and do that. And then I've forgotten one time early, early on, I forgot to do a kind of a consequences clause, mm. so that one person was meant to pay the other person some money, and if they and I forgot to say if they don't, what was going to happen. Ah. So now I say, so if you've got someone who's going to pay a person um, out of the house, for instance, I put, but if they don't, I put a little, I put all of those or mm. else's in mm. and what ifs in. Mm. So that's the biggest part about consent orders. It's, it might look good on the surface, but you have to check yourself and see if it covers all contingencies. It's uh, someone called it crystal ball gazing, and it is. Well, it's kind of like following different paths on a, in a maze yes. and seeing where it goes. So you've got yeah. to go through each little phase in that <laughs> and go, okay, what happens if it's school pickup time handover, but it's a public holiday Absolutely. or the child's sick and blah, 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 blah. It's, where do they go? What time do you pick them up? Like what are all yeah, the back all clauses? Of that. Yeah. It's kind of like coding. No, you know what it is. It's what? choose your own adventure. Yes. Remember those yeah. books you had as a kid? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do here? <laughs> Johnny got sick and he can't go to football. <laughs> Will you A, ring the dad, B, drop them off at school? Or C, follow your carefully prepared consent orders. <laughs> yes. So so consent <laughs> orders aren't rocket science per se, but it is the worst wording mm-hmm. and the thought process behind yep. it. So what do you say to those people who are going to think about signing consent orders? Maybe they've been sent some. No. Okay. I think you need to get legal advice, mm-hmm. independent legal advice. I like to think our course people and the people who listen to this podcast are getting fairly educated about Australian law, Mm -hmm. but you sometimes don't know what you don't know. Yes. So go and find someone who will run their eye over it for you and don't let them charge you an arm and a leg. No. Just give them a little, take your chronology that we show you how to do. Yeah. Take it in and say, do you mind? Can, are there any, any obvious things you can see that are missing here? Yeah. Can we sit down and read it together? Yeah. What am I, what am what I, am I missing? missing? Yeah. Yeah. And then that way you know 100% if you had somebody well, to look yeah. at it. Someone to look at it because yeah. at the end, I mean, I can follow a step-by-step step to um, dismantle the dishwasher, mm. for instance, mm. but I'm not 100% sure I've put it back properly until I turn it on. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. so the beauty of the course that we do is that, yes, you can go through and plug and play in mum's yes. wording and put it into the plan, mm. but we always suggest in the course that you go see a lawyer twice, mm-hmm. once to know where you stand and once to check the to orders, check the orders. either before you sign them yeah. or before you send them to the other side. Yeah. Because every time you send something to the other side, you run a risk kind of risk in inverted commas that mm. they might just agree. Mm. So you better make sure that what you're putting to them is what you want them to but agree to. isn't it true, Mum, there's these things called precedents that lawyers use, which well, which is basically yes, just a Laura. cookie cutter. Yes, Laura, there are bloody precedents. Bloody orders anyway. Oh. And everybody's <laughs> orders kind of look the same. Well, they should look the same because the formulas that we use mm. have been honed um over the last what seventy five was the ninety five to the fifty nearly forty years of family law. Mm. Um, so we use those formulas, we use those precedents because we know they work, and mm. we know we haven't forgotten anything. But there is always magic in how you put it together mm. and and what to put in. So um, we give people precedents to work with, but yes. there's 
you know, you have to be in skilled hands. Yeah. It, they're perfect. So um, you can sit down and we and change follow, them all the time. Follow yeah. the guidelines, follow mm. the videos that mum does and, and talk about everything and then off you go to your get your lawyer checked. to get one one hour session, get it checked and make sure the, it's all up to date. The big problem with a legal document like that is it could look amazing. Mm. You've done it all up. You go, oh, yes, I've dealt with the house, I've dealt with the car, or the kids, I've got the footy. I know what's going to happen when Johnny gets sick because I've got it in my plan. You think it covers everything. Mm. But even as lawyers, sometimes we get, I have been one of my lawyers the other day, send me some documents, Lynn, can you run your eye over these? Because what you think you're saying and what actually mm. the documents say might be two different things. Mm. So we did a bit of tweaking because the judge is not going to go, He's not going to let you say, oh, no, I didn't mean that. Mm. I meant this. Mm. No, the document is the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. So we do use precedents, but it's not easy. It's not that easy. You don't just cut and But you're saying consent orders aren't rocket science. They're not hard. Yeah. Yeah, they're not that. Apart from coming up with your orders Mm. and filling in the form, what is Mm. the other thing you have to do? You know you could find us on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. We're there waiting for you right now. If you want to get more out of The Divorce Course, all you have to do is go to The Divorce Course Podcast at Facebook or TikTok or The Divorce Course on Instagram. There we share bite-sized pieces of information and bite-sized inspiration and motivation to help you through this difficult time. Come and join our community and let us know you've joined. We'd love to see you there. Apart from coming up with your orders Mm. and filling in the form, what is Mm. the other thing you have to do? You've got to get it into the court. Mm -hmm. You've got to get it because it's nothing until it's signed. Like if you sign your consent orders and nothing else happens, then it's if it's children, it's a parenting plan. Mm -hmm. Um, But if it's anything else, it's just not anything until the court approves it. Okay. Because the court has the right to make these orders. And when you say get it into the court, you don't mean go in there, stand in front of a judge. No. You mean lodge it through their portal. Through the, yep, or get it into across the counter if they're still open sometimes, but mostly we do it electronically. Yeah. And there's step-by-step guides on Mm -hmm. how to do that. We have that in our course. We do. And the Com Courts portal, so how to get through that, how to do that, lodge your document and yep. know that you've done it right. Well, hope you've done it right because the registrars may have some questions before they agree, mm. but just deal with those as they come out. There are some fail-safers in the portal that won't let you lodge yeah, if unless you haven't you've got provided the right, the right documents, yes. which is great. I love it. Yep. Um, but, yeah, and sometimes they'll write back to you. So, look, you've got a, our listeners right now, maybe they're in the negotiation phase. Mm. They want to have consent orders. Yeah. Can you do partial consent orders? Can you get them, like say you went to mediation, Mm. you can't get them to agree to everything, but you guys agree on most of it? Yes. Can you have partial consent orders? Yes, and I like that. That's part of the ratchet ratchet effect we talk about in the the course where if you've got agreement on something pretty major like Mm. parental responsibility or um, who's going to live in the house, Mm. sometimes you can put that part um into an order. It's more common in um, children's matters to make a final order about something and then move on to the next stages and and narrow the issues, they call that, so Mm. that what might be a four-day trial arguing over parental responsibility and equal time and stuff like that, if parental responsibility, you've agreed they're going to have equal shared care or equal shared parental responsibility, that's probably a day and a half of of court time Mm. gone. Mm. So yeah, try and work out what you agree on. But you can't lodge partially agreed. I on. think you, you, I think you're better to hand them up to the judge okay. on the time at the day or the registrar or have your lawyer deal with it because mm. you run the risk of putting it in and then someone reading it quickly and going, oh, the whole case is finished, mm. and take it off the portal. Okay, to close the case. So be careful with that. All right. So what about just get them in writing? Just get them to just admit get them in writing, in writing and, yeah, then and then signed. you've got it. Yep. So if you if you think if you and your partner agree ex. to ex partner agree to say sole parental responsibility to you or unlikely but say they did, mm. then just write a letter and say just confirming you agree to sole parental responsibility to me. They'll write, they may write back yes that's fine and then keep that. There's your proof. Yeah. Okay. And they're not allowed to start arguing it again when it's already been decided. What about amicable? 
Yeah. Do amicable people need consent orders? I think we've established that's a yes, pretty much. <laughs> I think so. And you can still win the lotto and, and have someone change their mind. And are there any little tricky things about amicable? Like can can amicable pe- a little bit amicable cu- ex couple go to the same lawyer? No, nope. no, no. The same lawyer must not act for both parties. Okay. It, it independent legal advice is the key. And if and if you've got no lawyer and they've got a lawyer, that is their lawyer, nothing to do with you, and you can't rely on that person to give you advice. I had heard some horror stories early on about both sides going mm. to see a lawyer, but that's just a big, big no-no. I'm still hearing those stories. Are you really? Yes, I shocking. am. Well, I, I would tell you from a professional point of view, I think our insurance um, in Queensland at least mm. would be voided pretty well by seeing both parties and the and – the, um, Solicitor's conduct rules don't allow for a conflict of interest. So well, what do you do if your clients decide to have a fight? Do you write yourself a nasty letter <laughs> and then you write a, write an answer back? Yeah, you know, You've got to pick a side. Okay. So if anybody out there has gone t- together with their ex to see a lawyer, Get let us know. Lawyer. Send us an yeah. email. Oh. Send us, let us know who it is because yeah. I have heard of some mum. Really? Uh, yes. Okay. What if they are? manipulative and controlling, maybe narcissistic tendencies, Mm -hmm. and you have got consent orders, you've come to the agreement, Mm -hmm. you've got them sitting there. Is there anything you should be telling someone right now? If that's you, anyone listening, don't sign it before you send it over. Let them sign it first Ah. because otherwise you've got a document with your agreement on it circulating. And they may not ever sign it and lodge it, but they've got something to show the court. The saying she Later already on, agreed to she's this. She's already agreed to this, yes. But you might have thought, oh, I agreed to that as just to as. end it. Yeah, to mm. end it. And then he just produces it at court. Mm. I've heard a tactic where they, um, they, they don't say they agree to it, but they say, what about this as well? And what about this as well? Oh, yes. And then the, the people get tricked into going, oh, Delays. okay. Oh, Delays. okay. Yep. Oh, okay. And then by the time, and, and then by the time they agree to it all, kind of like the same thing mm-hmm. as signing, they go, oh, but by the way, they don't agree to the original things, just the ones you've agreed to. Yes, it's kind it's of a like dirty a trick. dirty trick of mm. making you think you're getting closer to the finish line yeah. and giving in a little bit for the sake of getting the, across the line. When actually you're making concessions. So what you do with that sort of low-down behaviour um, is get their, the bit that they agree to before they say, but what about, get that signed up mm. in writing. Mm. Put their offer to put it back to you. Yes, we agree to this, but mm. and if they're not prepared to do that, you'll save yourself a half a day of finagling and arguing over something when it's it's not really a consent order or even you anything. Know, anything. It's That's just nonsense. So frustrating. It's not fair. No, you wonder about some people. I think <laughs> you wonder about some. People. You wonder about some people <laughs> whether they really get a kick out of court or the lawyers. Or no, the the clients. I wonder about the lawyers. <laughs> I don't know. I'm seeing you know, some you're, horrible lawyers on TikTok. Say, it's a wonder you're talking to me still. <laughs> You've got all these dodgy lawyer stories. No, I must mum, move in circles. You off. are doing great <laughs> things for people. You're a good egg. I there must, are good egg lawyers, but there's some not very nice ones on TikTok. I only know good ones, mm. I think, <laughs> mm. more or less. Anyway, okay. So, TikTok might be America. No, they're Aussies. Sugar. Okay. They just they give dirty tactics Tip, trips, mm. tricks. No, we don't do that. No, we don't. Um, okay, so you've got that manipulative controlling. What mm. about high conflict? They fight all the time. What mm. kind of tips can you give to someone who's about to sign consent orders? What should they be checking for in their consent orders? Well, make sure that if they agree suddenly mm. to what you want, have another look at what yeah, you're Why? <laughs> why are you yeah, agreeing? Why? What's so good about these <laughs> orders? And go and get them checked again and yes. go through carefully because there might be something suspicious. Mm. Um but high conflict people sometimes give in. Mm. They don't like paying legal fees or they just don't see the point. But it's a good idea if you've got someone who you know just is going to fight with you about the colour mm. of the sky, just that l- your orders are so specific yes. that there's no room for room. what time or 
what location or what oh, day? And, All those are answered. And Timmy got sick at a quarter to nine, mm. not when school started, or quarter to eight, and that's before school started. So Does that's he go technically to me? Oh, not, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think maybe that big what if that we talk about mm. in the course where you go through and go, okay, what yep. if this happened? What Nail if this happened? Down. What if this happened? And I think there was a general clause I've seen in um, uh, mentioned on TikTok as well where it's just like if this situation hasn't been mentioned in these orders, but it occurs. Then, then this, this, person, this yeah. location, if this anything time. anything crops up, yet yeah, that yeah, hasn't been. That yeah, hasn't I like been touched. That. Because, like, especially during COVID when, when there was all those lockdowns, there oh. were a lot of people that didn't have orders that mentioned anything course, about it. yeah. Or, you know, the floods. There were no mentioning no. of what to do when school went, uh, when school was cancelled. Was... Is that classed as the school holidays? Is it classed as, mm. I don't know, do people now have emergency <laughs> Some things of in, them. Their clause, in their thing? Some of them, but it's a bit like, like, to have anticipated COVID, we would have had to keep harking back and remembering the bubonic plague. Mm, and or the so, Spanish flu. Or Spanish flu. So people forget, don't mm. they? And then, I mean, I worry, and I've said this before, I worry. You always worry. Yeah, about McDonald's closing down. I know. <laughs> oh, you told that story. So many of our people are having changeovers of the children at Macca's. What's going to happen? Oh, didn't you say one, oh, of, one yeah, person? Yeah, one case. The McDonald's closed down. There was a hungry jacks over the road, but he wouldn't move. Mm. And and the other person didn't see the children for That's about six months till she went back to court. Outrageous. Oh, my word, the court would go for him now really okay. badly. So, so, yeah, if it's high conflict and there is agreement, step one, check your orders and see if there's anything you've forgotten because mm. I'd be highly suspicious. Step two, um, if he has or she has changed them on and agreed to sign him up quickly. Mm. Okay. And don't be too triumphant. No. Sometimes with high conflict people, I put something in the orders that I know they'll just cross out and it gives them the last word and who cares. Okay. Does it matter if the orders uh, have things crossed out? Oh. Do you have to have them properly typed up? If if you're in court, um, you can even handwrite them. We yeah. always used to. If you're in bring, court. If you're in court. Um, and and you can change a couple of things by hand, and then you hand up what someone has to type up what they call a clean copy. Yes. But if you're lodging them in the court as consent orders with an application for consent orders and the consent orders, they should be um, nicely typed, signed, mm -hmm. and then a couple of clear copies. There's some requirements on the on the kit that you get that yeah. show you how to lodge it properly. Now, again, if you want to learn how to do that and go through all of that, mm. you can do that in our course. What about avoidant, Mum? What about trying oh. to get consent orders? With, but, but, but you got an agreement finally. Well, what do you say to those people before they sign? Okay, so what I say to you before you sign or before you, what you've got to do is get them to sign, of course, and yes. to make it easier for them. Mm. Here's what I do. Um, the application form has... Aside for your information mm -hmm. and aside for their information. Yeah. And if you've got a high conflict or controlling person uh, on the other side, you fill in your stuff and send it over blank mm -hmm. for them to fill in their own so there's no big argumentations over it. Yeah. And then when you sign, when you swear the document or affirm it, you actually, it says particularly that you're only affirming your side. Yeah. And that is what they want on their side. With the avoidant person, if, if that document's going to send them off into a spin, um, then fill theirs in as mm. well. You probably know most of the things. And then when you send the document to them to sign their consent orders, they you can't sign their consent orders for them, mm. um, but you can say something nice like um, that, you know, here uh, here's the application. I've filled my side in. I've had a go at your side. Um, change it if you want to. Here it is in, you know, Word version or whatever. Mm. Um and, uh, you know, if, if you're happy with it, leave it. If you're not, don't. And mm. and that just, it's like everything, sending them everything except the biro just <laughs> to make sign it. Just it that little yeah. bit easier. Yeah. What if the person, what if the person listening right now is the avoidant? Because yeah. I've seen a lot of people and in yeah. our webinars when we ask these questions, they just, they're avoiding Honey. and they just want it over. They don't care. They just want to sign whatever and just be done with it. What do you say to those people who, oh, you've who don't be... even read the consent orders <gasps> and they just sign it on the spot? I think I think you would do well to talk to a close friend or someone who will talk sense into you or think of yourself 
what would, advice would you give yourself if you were one of your friends? Yes. If you're saying, hey, I've got these orders and I'm exhausted by the other person's tactics, like they're, they're manipulative, controlling, or high conflict, and I'm just over it. They've sent me these consent orders. I'm th- I'm thinking of just signing them and not reading them or, you know, what do you reckon? And yeah. what would you tell your friend? Yeah. Are you crazy? You're fucking mental. Don't yeah. Give go me and, that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Go, go and see a counsellor. Um, get some support. Go and see a or if lawyer. Or if you can't bring yourself to read it, sit down with your friend and yeah, say, can mom, you read this with me? Yes. And can you think through with me, should I sign this? Are there any things I should be yeah. asking about? Because I do understand there's a lot of people who worry they don't want to go to court. Yeah. And this is sometimes, this is sometimes the consent order is turned up in the mail and saying, if you don't sign this, I'm we'll filing court. in court. And so it's this weird. Yeah. You can't do that, you know. You can't? No. You can't do that. You've got to um, invite the other person to mediation now mm, but, and have a good attempt. But still, and they can't. But it freaks you out. It yeah. freaks you out. And yeah. so, yeah, you've got to you've you've got to be thoughtful about it. And sometimes your friend and you might work it through and go, you know what? By the time I pay for lawyers and mm. the uncertainty and the delay mm. um, to get some person I don't know to make orders, mm. um, and you know house prices might go up or down or whatever. I might as well sign it. I'm I'm losing forty thousand or maybe you know something, but that's about what a law would cost, and I, okay. and I have to not care that he's winning one more time. Yeah, you know that, that. So, but you've got to make it a considered decision. And lastly, what about extreme avoidance? Where the person's just disappeared. How do you get them to sign consent? The other person. Yeah, the other person's disappeared. Oh, that's easy. You don't need to get them to sign. You go to court. Yeah. You do what you can to serve them. Mm -hmm. And you gradually explain to the court that you can't find them to serve them. The court probably will tell you serve means give them a copy of what you want. Okay. And then the court may give you a, what they call a substituted service order. They might say, oh, well, do you know where his mum lives? Mm. Yes, well, you can serve, send it to her, get it served on her, um, and we'll deem that as being served on that person. Okay. And if they still don't turn up, then you get your orders by default. Mm. There you the go. The court's just got to be satisfied that the other person was told about it or somehow knew about it. Mm-hmm. And then the court then, of course, still goes through and has a look and sees that the order is fair yeah. or not fair. Yeah. So basically the consent order application, it's the it's you, you stick your orders that you want in it. Attached it asks it, yeah. it yeah. put it in this section. You put it in, you both sign it, you fill it in, you file it, and then it's done. So it isn't rocket science. Comes out, yeah, it comes out. It's not rocket science. It's it's a lot of it's just patience and yeah. working through the issues. Do you know what I see it as? What? <laughs> when I was younger, I always, always wanted to do those fancy cakes with the fondant. Yes. And I was terrified of doing it because oh. it looked so complicated. Yeah. But I knew how to make a cake mm. and I knew how to roll fondant. I just was worried if I put it together, it wouldn't mm. figure out. I went and did a lesson. And realise, actually, this is really easy because I have all the <laughs> skills. Amazing. I can put it yeah. all together. It's not that hard. And everybody who's listening, you are intelligent of enough to be listening to this podcast to start with, to even know how to use a podcast. And you must be thinking, maybe I can do this myself. Yeah. Yeah. So you are smart enough. You mm. can do this yourself, but you might just have to do like I did for my cake thing and go and see someone once yes. or twice just to put you on the right tread so that you don't go completely off the rails and That's end up right. with some cake disaster. Because you didn't want a degree in how in cake decorating. No. You didn't mm. want to be able to make anything under the sun. I just wanted and to same with it. law. Although as lawyers we're trained in all sorts of law and all sorts of scenarios, mm. you just need to be expert in your particular mm. scenario. Mm. So if you don't have um, a disabled child, you don't need to think about that yes. uh, part of it. Or if you don't have a business in your family or property, mm-hmm. you don't need to know about mm-hmm. that. Mm. And I think uh, if you are interested in doing your own consent orders for parenting, Mm. there's an episode called The Twelve Agreements. We've narrowed them down to what the main 12 potential things you should be putting in your orders are. Mm. Um, Of course, you can do the course where we talk you through each step of the way. Um, but alternatively, you know, you you are capable yep. and you could do this yourself. And the money at the moment for everybody is tight. Yeah. Uh, everything's gone. I just watched on the news the other day. Everything's gone up by 4 to 5% in groceries. Yes. Uh, everything is tight. So the last thing you want to be doing is spending all of your money 
giving it to a lawyer who uses precedence anyway, no offence, Mum, to hey. write <laughs> to write there the same thing. They're probably it's right for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're the fancy cake decorator, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But anyway, um, I think. I think just the word consent orders can sometimes put some fear into yeah, people. But it because just you're like, means what the heck? Agreed. Yes. Just means agreed. Ac- and look, the hard part, the hard part that is rocket science in my eyes, yeah. is getting the agreement. Yes. I think once you've got the agreement, the consent orders aren't They'll rocket follow. science. Yes. Yeah. So it's getting to that agreement. So if you haven't got an agreement yet, check out our mediation episodes, do the module, the mediation module in our DIY think divorce about arbitration. course. arbitration. Have a look at your options, mm. figure out their divorce personality type, tailor your approach based on that, and then you'll get that magic pretty cake mm. and you'll be proud of yourself that you did it and you'll save yourself a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, anything else you want to say, Mum, before we go? No, I think they can do this. Most people can do this. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Mum, for your time. No worries, Laura. Bye-bye, everyone. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review, and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only, and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.